There is a thin line between grief and grace, and by grace, amazing grace, you are saved through faith, and not of yourselves, for this is a gift of God. I speak to you today because of the grace of God. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, amen. Who has been your Joseph? I had this dog. His name was Baby Boy, and he was my angel. He really had a call, a purpose, a reason for being here on this earth. And I was so blessed to have him placed with me. This tiny fluff ball, Baby Boy. He was brought home on my 37th birthday during truly the most difficult year of my life. It was back in 2005, and I was not well. I was struggling with severe mental health issues and freeing myself from all things that separated me from God. But here came this little two-pound nugget. He was my 18-year-old daughter's dog at the time. And she got him at a remarkably busy time in her life. So he ended up bonding with me. He was calm and sweet and gentle, and he cared for me when I could not suitably care for myself. He knew just when my crippling anxiety was raising up and when my anger and, and rage would rise up as well. And he would just lean back and bare his belly as some sort of reminder that he is a precious creature of God and that my anxiety is, is scary to him and it's very ungrounded and he feels hurt by it. His vulnerability reminded me that I had a responsibility to him, to be a safe place for him, and with every reminder of that, I could relax. And over the course of 14 years on this earth with him, not only was he a sense of calm to me, he was a sense of peace to anyone he met. He was a gentle soul who seemed to pick that same person who was broken, hurting, needed a bit of love, he would give it to them. And on the last night of his life, I thanked him for everything he brought into my life and how he kept me on the straight and narrow because he offered me grace. So nearly two years goes by, and, and now I've got this other little pup. His name is Ziggy. Ziggy Stardust. I don't know what I was thinking when I gave him that name because he's certainly living into that lightning bolt of energy. And he does not fit the image of the dog that I thought I needed. After many months of battling with him, becoming increasingly frustrated with his behavior, I, I often thought of getting rid of him. Until one day when he bit me or something like that, and my little grandson was quite upset about it and said, Nana should just get rid of him. Maybe she should sell him on Kijiji. I don't like him to bite her. And my reply was automatic. I just said, we do not get rid of people in this family. We don't throw them away, no matter what the struggle. We don't judge. So let's seek God's help. And let's hold on. And let's pray for him. And then once we've focused on God instead of our own impatience, let's try to see what's really going on. And from the moment I heard myself say that, I never again thought of getting rid of him. As it says so well in today's gospel, but love your enemies, do good, and lend expecting nothing in return. Your reward will be great, and you will be children of the Most High, for he is kind to the ungrateful and the wicked. Be merciful. Just as your father is merciful, and do for someone who can give you nothing in return. And this is where God's grace is surely shown. Now what is really going on with this tiny little pup is he was just acting like a puppy. And he was desperate for love and he needed understanding. But I now was busy. Very busy. Too busy for him. And I selfishly decided that he was not properly fitting into the life that I was living now. Becoming more and more involved in wonderful things 
living a life with beautiful friendships and places to go and things to do. And then I added one extra layer. I went to university. And now I'm spending many hours on Zoom, and this is not conducive to raising a tiny, little, energetic, biting, jumping, noisy puppy. So I had a choice to make. I could either offer him grace, or I could add to his grief. And just as baby boy, my former puppy, had offered me grace and adapted to me and fit into my world, I realize now with this new little fella who was nothing like the first dog, I needed to give him attention and a whole lot of love. So I became committed to be keen and to listen and adapt to his world, to get off my couch and run around a little bit, stop being so contemplative and silent, and I needed to make some noise again. I needed to see if there was enough love in my heart to roll up my sleeves and get down to his level. And in all reality, I thought he could really do nothing for me. I realized, though, that I needed to give him grace and quit the battle of wills that was causing him and my whole family a lot of grief. And in the process, I realized to surrender to what was. And in doing so, many wonderful things began to unfold. And because of his foolishness, this little furball has brought two empty nesters, a lot of belly, laughs, and tears of joy that had been missing in our home for a very long time. Now, I've gone through my mind a thousand times on what I would say about this Old Testament passage today, and not because I was stuck for what to say or for lack of ideas, but completely for the opposite. For weeks, my mind would be filled with scenarios because I love the story of Joseph. Ultimately, I would focus on the theme of this passage being about grace. That unimaginable grace that Joseph offered his brothers. For the same brothers who got rid of him, they had done the unforgivable. In their disconnection from God, they chose to focus more on their jealousy towards Joseph and the love that their father had offered him. They placed blame on him and they acted out of that selfishness. And little did they or anyone else know that this was already God's plan. For the same thing that upset the brothers, Joseph's amazing gifts to be able to speak and prophesy through dreams, instead of reflecting on the messages given to them, they became offended and they took action to stop him. But God's plan prevailed. And though Joseph was thrown into an empty well, as we know, and sold into slavery and tragically ended up in jail, Joseph's God-given gifts, the ones that bothered his brothers so much, the gift of sacred seeing, would then become a catalyst towards a full family's healing. When Pharaoh called upon Joseph to interpret a dream, that same gift of dream interpretation that left a terrible taste in the mouth of Joseph's brothers was now sweet nectar to the ears of Pharaoh. And Pharaoh rewarded Joseph with a position of profound effect and respect. Within the short-sightedness of his brother's selfish acts, they had lost God's truth and were busy formulating their own ideas of truth rather than realizing that God always has a plan. And no empty well, no jail, no grief given could remove Joseph from the grace of God that was always upon him. And with that grace, Joseph acted on behalf of someone that he did not think could do anything for him, and he acted in faith. While still a prisoner, Joseph made first steps by using his gifts to answer questions offered by Pharaoh. The actions of Joseph being in one with God as well as the grace he showed his starving brothers when they had shown up in Egypt, hungry, begging for grain. They were desperate. And they begged to who they thought was a stranger. But as it says in the gospel, but I say to you that listen, love your enemies, do good to those who hate you, bless those who curse you, Pray for those who abuse you. And Joseph loved his enemies. 
even though he was the brother they had sold into slavery, never thinking that he was still alive. In this story of abandoning one of God's children and selling them is human trafficking. And this passage does not, does speak to many of the ungodly things that go on still today. And today is Freedom Sunday. And the Anglican Diocese of Niagara has committed time and resources towards education and activism to aid in our understanding of the plight of God's children who are victims of human trafficking. So that the people who are now involved or wish to become involved with some of the most difficult areas of social justice can become equipped, strengthened, and supported to be able to reach out and do something about this travesty that is human trafficking in the world, and especially within this region. With the implementation of future endeavors, the diocese has engaged with those in leadership to become involved with the many networks of social justice without glazing over or dismissing the exceedingly difficult topics. But our involvement in these painful areas is nothing compared to the difficult and the grief that people who are living lives filled with this daily trauma withstand. People are never objects to be bought or sold or abused in any way. And reflected in the book of Matthew, this goes against God's will. And Jesus says on these two things, love of God and love of neighbor hang all the law of God. For no one sets out to be trafficked. No one sets out to be disposed of or forgotten, to be used, abused, or thrown into some sort of deep well. But when people are not offered grace in their life, like so many young people who have lived out childhoods in the welfare system or in abusive homes, they might go seeking help in all the wrong places. And the people they seek may end up focusing on their vulnerabilities in order to manipulate, control, and abuse them. Piling up more grief until that becomes all they know. And imagine the grief that any one of these trafficked people may encounter here at the breakfast program, or in the downtown core, or when we hear about stories of missing persons. And if we allow ourselves to dig deeper, we may be reminded that someone loves them, and someone misses them, and someone is grieving for them. Undoubtedly as much or as more as they are grieving for themselves. And who will be their Joseph? Who will show them grace? The grace that showed Christ showed people who could do nothing in return. And saying that human trafficking victims are a dirty little secret such as media often uses as a headline only adds to the grief that victims carry already. And this often judgmental attitude stigmatizes and holds survivors captive in revictimization and unable to move forward in lives of healing and thriving. And what if just for a moment we could imagine ourselves responding to is living a life that we do not understand, we could respond to them with grace. And what if that wee bit of grace aided in the rebuilding of their self-esteem and placed them on a trajectory to wonderful things? If that grace helped them to rebuild some trust in a world that they cannot trust before, and this grace led them to somehow be welcomed with open hearts until they saw a way out and they could begin the long journey to healing that might eventually lead them to wonderful places. Joseph forgave his brothers. Joseph had every single reason to be angry and full of hatred, but Joseph was overcome by love and grace. And maybe Joseph's love for his father overrode any of these unspeakable things that his brothers did to him. If grace is a gift from God, surely it was Joseph's faithfulness and belief in God that led to his understanding to offer grace to others. No matter how lonely and painful, that aided in revealing the truth that healing was upon him. And Joseph opened his hearts to his brothers and said, 
Now, do not be distressed with yourself, for God saved me too. God sent me here. God was always with me. God had a plan for me. And I was faithful through all the trials and grief. And now, because of God's grace, I stand in front of you. And adapted from this prayer by Carol Penner, I say, When I was hungry, God broke bread with me. When I was sick, God sat by my bedside. When I was in prison, God petitioned for my release. When I was sexually assaulted, God listened to my pain. When I was afraid to be alone, God stayed with me. When I felt guilty and ashamed, God told me it was not my fault. When I had to go to court, God went with me. And when I was filled with sorrow and hopelessness, God held my hand. And when I kept my story secret for years, God understood why. And when I called on God for help, God came and helped me. My friends, God sends God's angels in many forms, like in Joseph. And as I have spoken early, I have been blessed with many loving, grace-filled Josephs in my life. Many right here within these walls. Many outside. Some have offered me grace where they were a four-legged variety like Ziggy and Baby Boy. But for God's child, for whom I dedicate this reflection to, had the name April. And she lived out her adult life abused, enslaved, addicted, and trafficked, and she died that way. And she was once my Joseph, and she once saved me from myself, and she showed me grace. Who has been your Joseph? And are you willing to be Joseph to someone in return, for they too may end up in wonderful places? Amazing grace that saves. Praise be to God. Amen.